What's up guys, my name is Dan McCright. I'm here at Twin City Tees, and today we're gonna do a little Adobe Illustrator tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to convert raster images into vector images, and then do some fun stuff to make a little t-shirt design. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do here is just go up to File, Place, and select an image. I selected this image out of a clip art book that I photographed with my phone. Of course, you could do this with artwork that you drew. That would definitely be the best thing to do. This is a great time to remind you not to steal other people's artwork without their permission. All right, let's keep doing this. I like to duplicate the image by dragging it and just holding down the Alt key. And the reason I like to do this is I just like to have a reference image to look at. This image will definitely be easy enough to use the image trace tool to turn into a vector image, so let's do that. Select the image, go up and click on image trace. So if you click on this little button over here, the image trace menu is going to pop up and it's going to give you a bunch of different options. The first thing I like to do is play with the threshold buttons and just move them back and forth and find what you think looks best. Every image it's going to react differently, so just see what you got here. So after I'm happy with the threshold, I'm going to go down and just play with the path a little bit. I'm just going to increase it, it'll give our image a little more detail. And then I'm going to click on ignore white and hit the expand button. Now we've got a vector image, and we can resize this image as much as we want without worrying about losing details. Quick reminder, a vector image is just mathematical formulas on points in space with a path between them, versus like a raster image, which is pixels. So the image trace worked really nice on this particular image. Sometimes your images, it's not gonna work very well, so it just depends on the kind of image and the kind of detail you're looking for. Let's go ahead and throw this one on the artboard. Right clicked, select ungroup. This will split up all the separate pieces. And then let's get rid of these little fellas around the borders. For this video, we're gonna use a couple tools. There's a bunch of ways to manipulate your paths and your anchor points, but we're gonna focus on the delete anchor tool and the smooth tool. Here you can see the image trace left us with a very shaky, uneven path in a few places. This little dent in the fender is gonna be a great candidate for the delete anchor tool. All this is doing is just removing anchor points, which in this case will straighten out the path in between the remaining anchor points. Now let's select the Smooth tool, select the path, and let's draw a line along the path to be smoothed out. You can also go in and manipulate each anchor point by hand using the Direct Selection tool if that would be more applicable. And let's go into Hyperspeed. Right here we have a little logo that is placed on the head tube of this bicycle. I want to remove this, so I'm going to grab my pen tool and just draw a shape right around the logo. Then select that shape. Hit shift, also select the bicycle below it. Then let's pull up our pathfinder tool. Let's click on unite, and this will unite the two shapes into one. And it's like the logo was never even there. I would also like to extend this little reflection down the tube. I think that'll look nicer. So again, let's grab our pen tool and I'm just gonna redraw the reflection. I'm using a different color just to be able to see what I'm doing here. Now, just like before, I'm gonna select the new shape and the rest of the shape below it, but this time in the Pathfinder tool, I'm gonna use the Trim tool. This will cut the shape out of the shape below it. I'm gonna ungroup it and delete that shape. And now we have a beautiful reflection. Side note, the Pathfinder tool is one of the most useful tools in Illustrator, and it's also pretty daunting. In this particular image, I could have done a lot of different things. I could have used the divide, and I could have easily used the minus front for this job. But the beauty of Illustrator is there are many ways to complete a task. So just find out what makes the most sense to you. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're gonna add some color. Right now, all the white areas of the bike are negative space. There's nothing there. So let's make a different color bike. I'm gonna select green because that's our color here at Twin City Tees, and I'm gonna use the pen tool to draw in the tubes of the bike. You could also use a paintbrush. There's a lot of different ways to do this as well. I'm just gonna go along the black lines of the bike, and right now I'm using outline instead of a fill color just so I can see what I'm tracing. Now that my path has been drawn, let's flip to a fill path and then right click, arrange, and send it to the back. That'll bring the black outlines in front. At the moment, there are two shapes, one on top of the other, but we're gonna take care of that at the end, so don't worry about that right now. Let's just go ahead and finish coloring up that bicycle. All right, this image looks great, so I'm gonna add a little bit of text just to give it some flavor. 
So I'm going to grab the text tool, type in whatever you want. Let's do ride. I'm going to size it accordingly. And then this is the fun part, but also the hard part, choosing the great font that's going to accent your image instead of detract from it. So I think I want to mimic this stripe on the fender of the bike. So this font right here, I think that'll do that really nicely. And then to balance out the word ride, let's use tide and let's top it off so it reads ride the tide. Okay, so right now the text are not passed so I can retype anything I want, but I want to be able to manipulate them more. So once I'm happy with what I've got, I'm going to go ahead and go to type, create outlines. Now I can manipulate these any way I want. I think the hard corners on this font clash a little bit with the curves on the bicycle, so I'm just going to grab and pull on these little points to soften up the corners just a bit. The last thing I'm going to do is select the entire image and I'm going to trim it. And now the image is now flat and each color is cut out separately, which is going to work really great for screen printing. There's no overlying shapes. So when we place the artwork on separate screens, we're not going to get overlaying colors. And then I'm just going to mock this up so you can see what it would look like on a t-shirt. The only thing that's left for you guys to do is go over to TwinCityTees.com, fill out a quote form, send us your awesome artwork, and then you'll have t-shirts made to hand out to all your great friends. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.